I'm Katie Bowman and today I'm going to be doing a quick demonstration on this lovely stuff called Zestit. Um, it's mainly to be used with coloured pencils, either wax or oil based um, pencils, also oil pastels uh, for underpainting and for blending. Um, I've always pretty much stayed clear of solvents um, because the smell and also obviously the top is quite toxic so I've um I've bought some of this just to give it a test because I've I've heard so many good things about it so I just want to give it a, a quick go um now I'm just going to show you the back of the bottle so you can use it for oil pastels as well if you want to and um, the other thing that I've purchased with this is this blending sponge now the blending sponge is a portion of the zest it solution and it's actually in the sponge so you can dip your paintbrush in the sponge and it should give you enough to work with so I'm just going to do a few um test pieces I think what I'm going to do is stick with a few browns because that's normally what I would work with so I'm just going to I think zoom in here so you can actually get a closer look. Now the pencils I'm using are polychromos, Faber-Castell polychromos and these are the colours that I'm using. So we've got the ivory, we've got burnt ochre, burnt sienna and a bit of walnut brown. Okay, I haven't sharpened these very well so they're a little bit blunt but we'll go with them. Right, so I'm just going to start with the lighter layer because that's normally what I would do. I would normally work lighter. So that's the ivory going on. And then so this is how I would normally blend. Just going from light to dark with very light layers. You don't need pressure here. Now I have tried this on a bit of Bristol board, just Windsor and Newton Bristol board and it worked very well so I'm now going to try it on a bit of Fabriano uh, watercolour paper because it's got a bit of texture, a bit of tooth in the paper. So I just want to see how it lives up to a bit of tooth. So let's have a look. So I've just added there four colours, so you've got the ivory working to the walnut brown there on the right. So I'm just going to dip my paintbrush into the sponge. Sorry, it's a little bit close up there. I'm just going to dip that into the sponge just to get enough on there. And let's have a look. Let's see how this works. Wow. Okay. That's really brought the pigment out in there. It has kind of moved in the paper a little. So I think I may have just applied a little bit too much to the brush there. But of course, You'll be more precise when you're actually working on a piece, um, and I think that would be good. Um, the other thing with this is um, people have said it's very good for layering. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to test that now and just see how much it pops when we come to... Oh, wow, okay. That really works, doesn't it? Again, I'm using very light layers here. I'm not adding any... Wow. You can just notice the difference there, can't you? definitely notice the difference. It's very vibrant, isn't it? It's really brought the colours out. I'm just going to try it with um, a couple of other colours just so we can see. So a light layer of blue, I think, because I do use quite a lot of blue with black. Now you can see the, the texture of the paper coming through there's a lot of um, small little white areas there so I'm just going to add a little bit of black again very light layers you can see how light I'm doing it because you can see the paper coming through so you've got all those little flecks of, of paper right let's give this a go so again dipping in the sponge right can still see some of the white areas of the paper there 
but it is a lot better. You can actually move it around a little bit as well. Okay, so that has made quite a difference. So I'm just going to add another layer and just see how that compares. Oh my goodness, look at that pop. Now this, again, I'm using very, very light layers. I'm literally going to show you how light I'm doing it. I'm literally holding my pencil with the tip of my finger. I'm just a very, very light layer here. And I'm just going to try the blue again, just to see how that... Wow, it really brings out the pigment. It's so much brighter. One thing I I think this is going to help me with is when I'm doing backgrounds, um, you do tend to add a lot of layers to backgrounds and you have to blend the colours in quite a lot. Um, I'm going to try a grey, actually. Let's try some grey. Let's just move this a separate piece. Right, so a very light layer again. This is actually quite exciting. I don't normally do solvents, but I think I'm going to start now. So let's have a look. Grey. Very light layers again. Here I'm using the dark sepia and some warm grey. Um, so let's see how that... Now I'm using quite a large uh, round brush here, it is just for the demonstration, but of course if you're using, oh goodness me, if you're um, going to be doing more precise areas like I normally do with fur, um, of course you can use a smaller brush. I can't believe the difference, it's amazing. Now you've got to remember this is quite a toothy paper. And you can just see that difference. I mean, I'll show you the black and the blue again. The difference there is amazing. And the other thing I can notice as well is the smell. It doesn't have that awful toxic smell. It's it's a pleasant orange. Oh, goodness me, look at that. I really like this. I really like this stuff. This is going to save me so much time with backgrounds. I don't know why I haven't used this before. Goodness me. Right, so we're just going to try another another layer here. It does seem to darken it quite a bit. Now, I'm not sure if that's because it is still wet. And then you can just keep adding those layers in. But again, the pressure I'm using is very light. So if you use, you know, a heavier hand, could probably get this done a lot quicker but um warm grey and dark sepia is probably not the best combination that i've used here but um it'll give you an idea but you can just see the difference that it's made from you know having the the very white and normally what you would do is you know use a white pencil and try and, and try and blend it so here's with the white, or you would use a lighter grey to blend and then go over with another another layer. Um, but the difference is just phenomenal. I'm really selling this, aren't I? <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is um, we do sometimes use, obviously, um, white with black. So I think we'll, we'll do that next. Um, I'm just going to do a quick... Move the paper again so we can do it here. Right, so very light layer. I'm trying to keep the same pressure here just so you can see the difference. And I'm just going to test it with um, some white over the black as well just to see how, how that pops because sometimes you'll have a, a black cat with a few white whiskers and um, or of course detailing in clothing as well if you've got the shadows um, of course you would use black in the deepest 
see just adding it on here it doesn't look to make much of a difference it just looks wet um, it's not until you add that extra layer it just pops it really does now by the time I've finished with this one the other bits it looks like they're just starting to dry um, if you have a look here that they're, they're looking like they're drying here so I'm, I think I'll go over those in a moment um, just so you can get an idea right so this is it might actually give a different effect as well once the zest it has dried because um, I, I am doing it on the wet here so I'm quite limited for time obviously I have children this happens right so you can you can notice the big difference here again I'm just using very very light pressure that is just fantastic okay so normally if I'm doing a black background it would take layer upon layer upon layer but this would help me massively especially with this paper it seems to really absorb it very well it was similar on the Bristol board but I haven't I haven't done very much I've, I've had a little bit of a play um, yes you can you can kind of move it around it's it's almost like it dissolves the the oil and just turns it into turns it into a fluid so you can you can play it's quite exciting actually I really enjoy drawing and well of course I, I love drawing um but I think this will make it a little bit more fun because I enjoy painting as well so this will kind of bring in painting as well um you can also use a a stub as well I would expect you can use a pencil stub I don't have one to hand at the moment but have a play and 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 try it for yourself. I'm just going to quickly do a blue over this just to see. You can see it. I'll have to zoom in again. That's my nice bit of blue. Uh, you can see it does give a little bit, but you can just see the transition from that layer to that layer. It's phenomenal. Such a difference. I am using very light layers, so I'm not adding lots of pressure. It's just playtime. You can see it does blend it quite well. You can see the, the blue hue. It might be good to do a, a lighter layer first and then add the darker, the darker ones. Right, so what I wanted to try was um, how the white pencil would take to the black now i always find that polychromos the white pencil is a bit yellow and um, you can never get a very good white and i'll show you an example here if i do it on just on this white paper here you can see it's very slight but it's a very small amount but it is very yellowy um so in the wrong light it does make you make it look yellowy so I tend to draw around finer hairs um, I think I've done another tutorial video where I've um, shown you how to draw around little hairs but that's uh, that's my choice that's how I do it everybody can you know do it their way right so let's have a look and see how the white right okay so it's not Actually, it's quite good, isn't it? Now, it's not brilliant white, but it does. Now, you do have to apply a bit of pressure here. But it does blend very well. It feels almost... I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, really like it there is quite a lot of residue on there but it's obviously like a liquid so you may have to you know wipe your pencils as you're using this because otherwise you will get the residue 
Oh, I quite like that. Using the white over the blue area. Yeah, the blue doesn't stand out as much as I was hoping. But it does. I have to keep zooming in here just to show you. It does give a blue tint. Now I'm just going to do the white over these browns now that it's... I'm going to have to wipe this pencil. I'm going to do the white over this brown because I do use quite a lot of brown. I'm using quite a lot of pressure here. And it doesn't really... I think that's going to take some practice. Right, if we try and do it while it's wet then. Let's blend it a bit more. That's really blended now. Okay. So let's just do it while it's wet. So you can see. Oh yes, that's much better. So it does it is workable much better once um while it's wet, so don't don't let it dry out too much. Now the other concern that I had was um whether this would obviously evaporate. I wanted to make sure that there wouldn't be any residue around the outside. Um, there doesn't seem to be on, on on the browns. It does. You can see it there because I have I have moved the, the the brush into that area. But you can see on this uh, blue and black area, you can't see anything at all. Really, um, it has blended it very very well. Now I haven't applied quite as much. Let's have a look on the. So this has dried as well. So you, you do get bits of residue on your on your pencil. So you have to just be careful when you're going in with the white. If you're applying any pressure, it does move it around a little bit and you get... You see the difference. You can't, you can't see. It, it tends to move it around when you do it without the solvent or it just lightens the area. Whereas with this, you can actually see more significant white area. Okay, so the next test I wanted to do, this is basically for me, because uh, I wanted to really test this out today. Um, next thing I want to do is, is see if you can erase it, see how good it is when you get the rubber to it. So I'm gonna try the black first while it's wet. And just see how that right okay that's not move that's just moving it around it's not it's not erasing at all there you see on a normal normally you would be able to remove probably this much this is a textured paper you can probably get it better on um bristol board because it's very smooth now it does seem to yeah, that's that's a bit yucky. You get you get that residue coming off. Okay, so not impressed with that one. Okay, so I'm just going to go on to a drier area. So let's go on to this blue and black. Let's just see how this again. It doesn't. No, it doesn't like that at all, really. On the on the finer bits, you see how it's moving it, and it's it's got this yucky kind of. I don't know. I don't like that. That's that's the bit I don't really like. You're getting that residue on your pencil, and you're also getting the residue if you need to erase. So, I think it's going to be a case of sticking to my fine white hairs as I normally do them. Yes, it doesn't seem to erase very well. I was hoping it would give me a nice crisp white line there. But it doesn't. It does take a little bit off. And I suppose if you went at it for long enough. The, the, the problem is, is, is these areas here. 
I think you're going to have to keep there. It's it's built up on the eraser there as well. So I'll just turn it. Yeah, it moves it. It may be this eraser, I don't know, but I, I generally use this for everything. This is the um, 100 Tombow eraser. And I love these pencil, these um, mechanical erasers because they are great for graphite as well as for coloured pencil. But as you can see, it's not doing its job on this one. So, yes, and that's that's kind of stained the paper. I'm just going to see if I can take that off. No, it has. I'm using quite a lot of pressure here as well, and it's not it's not coming off at all, really. So just be careful um, if there are any areas where you're going to need um, to rub anything out. You may want to go over it with, with your white pencil or an alternative colour. So, overall, I'm very pleased with it. It certainly blends very, very well. Um, I'm just going to see if I can you know, put two colours together. So, this colour is... Um, Caput Morton Violet, and it's number 263. Now I've got the 120 set of the polychromos, but um, some of these will be available in the, the 60 set. You'd have to look. Right, so we've got a lighter, very similar colour here, which is the Caput Morton. I'm going to show you that because I'm probably pronounced that completely wrong. Kapu Martin, is it? I don't know. Maybe. So let's have a play with this colour. And then I'm going to go in, into a more ready brown, a very warm brown. I love this brown. I use this quite a lot, actually. I've been through so many of these pencils. Um, and this is the Burnt Sienna number 283. There are a lot of uh, animals that have this brown in their eyes as well as in the fur. So let's have a look. It really pops, doesn't it? It really fills those areas very well. I think this is ideal for um, backgrounds, especially how, if you have um, a natural background, like a, a wooded area, and you want to blend greens with browns and blacks and yellows. So I'm just going to test this now. See, that's lovely, isn't it? But again, I'm getting a bit of build up there. I really should have um, sharpened my pencils as well before I started this. It probably would have been a, a lot better, but time is of the essence. Yes, that makes a dramatic. I'm, I'm working very light here. I'm going to go quite dark now. Are quite heavy, I mean. There. That's quite good, isn't it? I'm just gonna see how it works with the with another layer of this. Alright, so it blends it in. It doesn't keep that white bright white so you'd have to go over them again not bad not bad at all again I think I'm going to use this 
four, maybe, backgrounds. Um, one last test that I want to do, I'm going to use this small little area here just to show you. Um, I'm going to do layer, layer after layer after layer of how I would normally do with um, a, a pet portrait. So I'm just going to do three layers. Again, I'm going to use the same colours. I'll just stick with the burnt ochre. Um, so normally I would start off with a, a lighter colour. Let's get this. It's quite rough, but it's just for testing purposes. Um, and then I'll just apply a layer of this stuff. Okay. And then I will go in with the burnt sienna, I think. Oh, wow. That really takes to the paper very well. If you notice the difference, you can feel it when you when you are uh, working it on. It just seems so much smoother. You don't feel the texture of the paper, if you will. So, right, I'll just quickly continue. Yeah, you can definitely notice a big difference there. And then I'll just apply another quick layer on there. So that's almost made the that's almost made the burnt ochre really bleed into the paper. So it's it's covered the the paper, and then that next layer is just almost sitting on. But you you do get a hint of that colour bleeding into the into the first layer. Uh, let's have a look. I'm going to go in with the walnut brown. I might as well just keep the same colours. Um, so here we go. That's not bad at all, is it? And you, you can definitely feel the difference on the paper. It's almost like it smooths it out for you. And I'm just going to add, see if I can add a little bit of white. No, it's not working very well. So with your highlights, I think, try and get them in first. And there we go. It really does blend them very well. Or it's good for, as it says on the, as it says on the tin, um, it's good for an undercoat. So if you wanted to blend all those colours in, you can. As you can see, it has moved it around quite a lot, so be careful with the brush that you're using. I'm just going to try it with a smaller brush. Yeah, that makes a big difference. So when you're using fur, just make sure, sorry, when you're drawing fur, make sure you use a, a thinner brush. And that'll make the difference. Yeah, you can notice the difference there. It really pulls the pigment, doesn't it? So there we go. Um, I'll quickly see now that I've put another layer of this on, I'm just going to see if I can now work in the white. Right, okay, you can do now that the background's a little bit blended in. So it depends what effect you're going for, depends what you're drawing, of course. Um, it does look a little bit muddy, so I think keep to one layer on your on your under on your under layer, and then work up the other colours on top. So it may be worth just, I'm going to do a demonstration actually, just quickly. So 
say we're going to start with that colour as the underpainting. That so brings out the colour, it's beautiful. You can add in your whiter areas. You probably can't see this very well in the video, but you can notice it a little bit. It doesn't make as dramatic as an impact as, you know, if you were just doing the... There we go. So there's the difference. Applying the um, zest it on every layer makes it a little bit muddy. If you keep to just one area and just do it on the underpainting, that just um, almost gives a good surface for the, the pencil to be key to, the, to whatever the texture is. Now this is quite a textured paper, as, as I say. If I just do a a light layer here. You can just see the, the difference. So on the left there you can see the layers with the zest it and the one on the right without all the, the white areas and that's sometimes troublesome to to get rid of especially when you're doing backgrounds it just it takes forever but this I think is going to help me massively. So I hope I've um, not bored you for too long. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you have any questions, obviously just give us a, just drop me a message below, or you can go onto my Facebook page, which is Personal Artwork, or pop over to my website, personalartwork.co.uk, and you can email me from there. My email address is katie at personalartwork.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching. Like I say, any, any questions, please just drop me a comment below. Take care. Bye-bye.